we're excited to bring you Visionary Voices Up Close. Listen in as we get up close and personal with members from the Women Leading Ed community. In this episode, we ask leaders, what is your advice for women in specialized special education roles who are looking for opportunities to advance and grow in their career? Here's their advice. I would say there's nobody better suited to take a leadership role than someone with a special education background because you really understand specialized services. You really understand that each child is a unique individual. And so if you're going to have a system that's responsive to student needs and families' needs, someone who comes in with that mindset, which is often what special education leaders bring to the table, is a huge asset. So I would start by recognizing the strength of that role. And then the second thing I would say is to make sure you're letting your intentions be known. I think sometimes, especially for women, they don't want to say that because there's this taboo against women sounding ambitious or something like that. But once people know that you're interested, then people start to mentor you and help you grow into the next step in your career. And we all want to do that. You increase your impact by developing yeah. relational yeah. skills, leadership skills, and that connection piece. Uh, so that way you're, advocating, you're, you're not advocating from the middle, you can advocate from the top you're not in a leadership role and you want to be in a leadership role, this is my advice. It's been my, my kind of way of getting through every challenge in my life is to connect with someone in a position that you want to be in. When I was going through the ranks as a teacher and thinking about moving up, there weren't a lot of formal uh, coaching programs. And I would say connect to someone. If you don't, you're not in a coaching program, create your, your own coaching program. Find a mentor that you can talk to, not only about the work, but how to balance the work with your personal life. I think as women educators, you know, we have families and we have, you know, work. That's a hard balance. So I would say find someone who's in the role you want to be in, who has a similar work ethic and a life that you have, so they can help you through both of those challenges, both business, because that's hard, and then your personal life. Make your interest or your curiosity known. Maybe you don't know exactly what it is that you want to do, but there's this sense of, I can do more and to find some of your allies within the system who can help you think through, could you get me 15 minutes with the superintendent or the chief academic officer? Or if there's a conference or a network that you feel like you've been dying to go to. So just to take some risk to make your curiosity and your ambition known. And you'll be pleasantly surprised how that will be received by many of the folks that you work for. Continue to do the great work in the positions they're at in, but also start to put their feelers out, out with people that have mentored them or informally mentored them or coached them along the way and start asking a lot of questions like, can I shadow you for a day or can you teach me how to do this thing or what do you think my next career plan is? Like, let's career map. Seek out a leader that you respect. Ask for a time where you could have a conversation about exploring some possibilities and what's what the future might bring to you. And you know, I think sometimes just making people aware that you have that interest. So for women who are really interested in director roles, moving up to superintendent or other positions, I highly recommend that you build the network around you and that you focus on all the successes that you have, which are so many and so robust. Definitely build your network. Never sell yourself short and stand in your strength. Find your people because they are out there. Find women that are strong, passionate, powerful women. Work with them to sponsor you and just know that you have it in you. You have it in you. You just need the right set of circumstances and we can't do it alone. And so find that network, cultivate that network. It is there. I just read a, a little book called uh, No, and it was about um, pushing through the idea of people are always going to tell you no, but that does not stop you. So continuing to live beyond the, the noise and the distractor and to stay focused on what it is that you want to accomplish for our students. Continually push yourself forward and believe in yourself, right? So very often women, if they don't check all the boxes, they don't decide to go for something. And you don't have to check all the boxes. Nobody knows everything in every job. You learn things as you go. I think passion and energy goes a long way um, and being really, really committed. So first of all, don't dim your light. 
because a lot of times we have directors in this field, we have coordinators in this field, we have psychologists who are doing amazing work, but they will dim themselves and figure that they cannot get to the top. Second of all, find a person who's authentic and who's willing to help you advance in your leadership role. Don't be afraid to go to another woman and say, listen, how did you get to the top? And can you help me? Because if we are afraid, we're gonna stay in the spot that we are in. But when you don't dim your light, you walk in your power, you walk in your authenticity, you will not be afraid to uh, seek a sponsor, seek another woman leader to say, I need your help, will you help me? And so don't dim your light and go out and seek assistance.